Hey, I'm Espen Croft, and today we're going to take a look at the Roland JX3P from 1983, Programmable Preset Polyphonic, the 3P. Some of you watching this video will know that the 3P has several different mods from several different manufacturers. This is an original 3P, it's not been modded in any way. So we have two preset banks, A and B, with 16 patches each. Two user member banks, C and D, also with 16 patches each. And the preset banks has their names written on the 3P itself. At the back we can run the signal out in mono or stereo. We have a phone's output, a hold pedal jack, a sequencer trigger in jack, and we can load and save to tape memory from two jacks. And we have one of those infamous low, medium, high, output volume switches. That often seem to crackle over time. On the other side we have the MIDI, called MIDI bus, since this is one of the first MIDI synths ever, and a memory protection switch and programmer input. And like on the Junos, LFO is done manually by pushing a trigger switch. And the range of the pitch bend wheel can be adjusted in three different positions from that switch. The keyboard is not velocity sensitive. And we have the volume knob and a brilliance fader. You can hear the effect of that. The chorus, of course. We have a button called mute, and that mutes the two lower octaves. So it doesn't mean anything on the highers, but here. This can come in handy when doing stuff on the sequencer, I'll get to that later. We have a hold button. But I prefer to use the foot pedal hold for that. And we can transpose the keyboard up and down one octave at the max. So let's transpose it up one key to see. You just hold the next key, press the transpose button, and we've now transposed everything up one key. Let's go back to C. So let's try to do one whole octave. Or down, as well. And back to default. And just to state a fact, you don't have to use the PG200 to program sounds or edit sounds on this synth. You can use the synth itself, it's actually quite easy. We have the edit map here. And as you can see, every parameter has its own number written on that parameter that echoes the PG200, by the way. So you can see some are in white, some are in red, with a number on it, and that'll come in handy now when you want to edit sounds. The white numbers are called group A, and the red numbers are called group B. And if you want to change the filter cutoff, well, that's in group B, the red one. And filter cutoff has number one. So you press group B button, Press one of the 16 switches, and now you can see the LED lights up at number 10. So the filter value is now at 10, and by using the sense fader, you can now change that to change the filter cutoff. And so to go out of edit, you press the group B button again, and you've now changed the filter cutoff. Let's do another one. Let's say we want to change the source mix. Well, that's a white one, group A, number 15. So we press group A and press the number 15. And now we can see the value for that and change that if we want to. So now we're mixing between oscillator A and oscillator B. That's all good and well, but what about those switches on the PG200 that are sort of hardwired between three to four different settings? Let's change the waveforms in DCO2. That's in group A, number 6, 
And now we use the preset bank buttons A, B, C or D to change between different waveforms for oscillator 2. So that's how we change out those parameters. Again, without the PG200. It's actually quite fast and very easy, in my opinion. But if you were well funded, you could obtain this. And inside here, we find, yes, that it's the PG200 controller. And this PG200? Well, I think this used to belong to another fellow YouTuber, isn't that right? That's right. I sold a few synths to fund this bad boy. And when I looked who'd bought the PG200, I was like, no way. And he's not talking about me, actually. This PG200 now belongs to a good friend of mine, Anders Jensen, who has loaned it out to me to do this tutorial. He's also the owner of the 3B you see before you, so that's all his, actually. But it's my pleasure to behold now, and uh, with that comes a big, long, fat controller cable. So let's hook that up. And let's see how it does. So everything gets a lot smoother, of course, with this controller, where we have easy access to the DCOs, the filter section, the LFO modulations, envelope modulations, the VCA cars, etc., the ADSR. Life gets a lot easier when you have a controller, I admit to that. The sequencer is really the icing on the cake here. You have um, 128 notes maximum, and you can divide those into measures if you want to, 16 steps long each measure can be. So let's just do a little short sequence. That's what I want to put in. I press right and I just start playing. Simple as that. And that's the end of the first measure. Now we start on measure two. Measure 3 coming up. And measure 4. So the length of that is now set by where we stop the start of measure 5. By holding down the rest button while you start the sequencer, we'll let you see the 16 steps and the measure count. That's something you'll always forget, so usually you don't see the steps. So let's overdub that. A little bit of uh, up and down arpeggio, 16 steps. So hold down the note key and the right, and now you're in overdub mode. And now we can hear what you've done before while you're recording something new. And now that mute button is on. So you're hearing the top notes more than the lower ones. Perfect for this overdub session. And let's play that back. You can of course sequence chords as well, just remember you have six notes polyphony at the most.
And so by using the note button while we write in our sequence, we can have the chord sustain a bit more than just doing sixteenths during the measure. So that's one measure. Let's hit that back. So that worked well. Let's do some overdubs. So that's the bass line. So let's overdub a third time. And let's try and get a little bit of melody going here by using the rest button this time. Add some rests to our notes. Let's do one more and see if it breaks up the polyphony. If it does, it'll cut out the first notes we played.
So let's check out some sounds I've made for this 3B. I have a custom bank C and a custom bank D.
Well, this synth is a lot of fun, a lot of fun. The sequencer is awesome, and the fat, creamy, warm sounds you can get out of these are truly great. I definitely think you should check them out. It has a module counterpart as well, known as the MKS-30. While it doesn't sound exactly as the 3P, it's in the same ballpark, but I will show you a video later where I compare the two. So if you want to hold out for that, you can, you can do that, but you definitely need to check out both these synths if you have the chance. So if you like the sounds you heard in the video, those are available as a patch bank, patch C and patch D, and check out the video description for where you can download this bank. If you have any comments or questions, please ask them in the comment section. As always, I'm Espencroft, thank you so much for watching, cheers!